there are so many different types of people that aren't helpful to your growth and development. They pseudo are. It's like, oh, I just want what's best for you. Oh, I want you to go to college because I want what's best for you. Oh, I'm just trying to protect you. Oh, I'm just trying to do this. I'm just trying to, fuck you, fuck you. The people that really care about you will support the decisions that you want to make unless they're fucking retarded. And some decisions are retarded. But even if they are retarded, most people that really care about you will say, try it. Come back to me with the results in like a couple months or a couple weeks or whatever. What's going on YouTube? I don't even know what account I'm posting this to, but it's the account that I'm gonna post it to. Pretty much today, I'm basically just gonna be rambling and talking my ass up because I have a lot to say. I haven't posted it in a while, so I just trying to get back into it. But pretty much, I got my video ideas over here. Pretty much this is gonna be why most of your friends are holding you back. And to be honest with you, I think most of us know that there's at least one person in our life that's holding us back from achieving so much more than what we've already achieved and accomplish all the greatness that we know that we're destined to accomplish. Now, for me, that's not my case as of right now because I've already gone through the process where I've cut off everybody that's toxic or that isn't helpful or conducive of a good life for myself. And um, I've known that since a very young age. I'm 21 now, but basically the day I, I turned 18 and graduated high school um, in 2021, that was it. I left everything behind and then, you know, kind of went all in on, on myself and, and really just bettering myself in so many different ways, whether it was the way I look, the way I talk, the way I, I, I fucking dress, everything, bro. I changed my entire being because I knew that I was destined for more than what I was surrounded by. This video doesn't only have to pertain to peers or friends, whatever you want to call it. This could also pertain to like family members and those types of people that are physically going to be close to you for a lifetime, but you don't have to allow them to be close to you personally because they might not be conducive of that good life that you want to live or, or the successful life you want to live. Now, this video really will only apply to those that want more for their life, right? If you're kind of We'll call it content just to make you feel good. But if you're content or complacent with your life, you don't really care to have more. You don't have the drive or the, the ambition to have more. You're kind of okay where you are. You're okay working a nine to five and getting paid fucking 15, $16 an hour. I'm in New York, so that's the minimum wage here. You're okay with making that. You're okay fucking, you know, living in a modest place. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. It, it's the contentment of the possibility, right? It's okay if that does happen, but I'm gonna do my best to achieve the things that I actually want in life. When I say that, when it comes to, um, you know, family members or people that you're supposed to be close to indefinitely, almost like a parent or a sibling, something like that, those ones are, 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 are a bit different, but it's still the same principle. It's the same exact principle. The principle is if the people surrounding you aren't an addition to your life, then they're a subtraction. You could have some like just waste spacers, like fucking ones that just are there kind of, they don't really do anything bad or good. They're just kind of like, you know, you chop it up, talk about mindlessness. But for the people that really matter, that have an effect on your life, you have an ultimate choice to make. You either have them not be in your life or have them be in your life. You either allow them to affect your decisions or not affect your decisions. To get into, you know, how this may have affected me or applied to me, I know that back in high school, um, I used to hang around, you know, some not great people. All the kind of gangbanging, you know, we gonna try to steal fucking shit out of the cars, beat up people, all that kind of stuff, right? Now, I never really did the, the, the bad stuff because I always knew I was taught by my parents, like, you know, leave that to the birds, bro. Like, that's not for you, that's for them. Let the dumb niggas do dumb nigga shit. You just focus on what you focus on. Now, granted, I would be in the vicinity so kind of guilty by association, but truth be told, I wouldn't do the bad shit. Like sure, I got in a couple fights here and there, but like I wouldn't do the terrible shit that would put you in a shitty position, you feel me? So um, yeah, like I wouldn't place myself in the position, but just to put it into perspective, these people, the ones that I hung around every single day, they would come to my house, we would go out, we would do two mans, everything like that, bro. One of them is locked up. 
they were fighting a, a, a conviction or a charge or some shit like maybe a couple years ago. And that's not to like talk shit on them or like to even hate because it's always gonna be love for them because they helped me out in so many different ways throughout me growing up. But that's helping me out as a kid. When you become an adult, you got adult shit, adult problems, adult responsibilities, you feel me? I got a mom to take care of. I got a lady to take care of. Eventually, I'm gonna have a kid to take care of. Me running around in the streets like a little nigga ain't gonna take care of them. That's just gonna make me look like a bum ass nigga. So when I turned 18 and I graduated high school, I was living with my grandparents. I was, I was comfortable. I was in my hometown. I had my friends. I had, I had, you know, my grandfather would let me fucking drive his car. So I had a car to drive. You know, I, I, it was my home. It was my home for at least five, six years, right? So if you're in a place where all your friends are at and you got a job, you know, you're getting paid 15, 16 an hour, whatever it was, you cool like that, right? You're 18 and you cool like that. You're like, all right, I'm cool. But the thing that I did, the thing that kind of, I always would say separates me from the rest is that my mom had a, had a little spot that she just got into. Hadn't lived with my mom for like, six years or so, right? My mom had just got a little spot that she got into. And then it, it was like, you know, she was like, yeah, you could stay here or whatever and be here. Completely different place, con completely different people. Like there's nobody that looks like me around here. Like it, it's, it's all fucking Jewish and Asian people. The fuck I like, th there's no friends here. There's nothing. And I've been here for another six years and still nothing, bro. So like, not six years, like four years. I've been here for like four years or whatever. But the point is that I left where I was comfortable to get to a place where I was uncomfortable, but would be ultimately better for me. This place fucking sucks. There's nothing to do. Everything to eat here is expensive shit. Again, Jewish and Asian people, I don't relate. I also don't relate to the few black people that are here because they're ghetto as fuck. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't go out, I don't do nothing. So what am I left with? I'm left with me, myself and I and my fucking thoughts. That's it. Now, I know I ramble on too much, but it's like I have so many things that I think about and I wanna say and I wanna express to people that are like me because there aren't too many people like me or like us if you're watching this video, right? You find it extremely fucking hard to find somebody that is like you. My best friend in the entire world, he's from this hometown. The only person that I speak to from, from there, the only person that I see, we, we so locked in, bro. Like we're so similar, it's fucking ridiculous. When you find somebody on that same wavelength as you, y'all fucking, y'all locked in together, you push each other, you give each other feedback, you, you, you fucking grow together. Y'all might not be speaking, but you're growing at the same rate as each other or whatever it is. Y'all just like, I remember for us, it was, it was like so fucking like weird how we would basically not speak for a couple months just cause you know, work got busy or this, this and that, right? But when we would speak again and like, you know, come together and be like, oh yeah, like how's it been and shit like that. We would be learning the, the same exact shit. Start fucking talking about uh, uh, cosmic manifestation or Jesus or fucking, you know, red pill, getting girls pick up, female nature, hypergamy, all the, every fucking thing, bro. Business stuff, like we would always, we would always kind of be on like the same wavelength without ever being close. And granted, it could be because there are certain trends online and social media, but certain things, like it just fucking like reading the book, um, As a Man Thinketh, or, you know, Think and Grow Rich, same niche, but it's like, what are the odds that somebody that you're not speaking to is doing the same exact shit, getting to the gym the same exact time, doing the same workouts or watching the same YouTubers, watching the same, like it's the same, like you find that person and you just know, bro, like, this is the person that I wanna surround myself with. The person that is like me, but is like me with all the good parts of myself, you know? They wanna do all the good parts. They wanna improve their mental health, their body, their their money, all that shit. Like they, they, want, they want better, they want more for their life, bro. And like some, some people don't understand it. People that aren't from the hood or from like, you know, just like shitty places, they don't understand because there are times, <laughs> this is the craziest shit, but like there would be times where my bro, like, you know, the ones that would gangbang and shit, they would really be like, 
they thought that they were going to die or go to jail by the time they're 40, at least. And they were like, I'd rather die than be in jail. But like, that's really all they were like, bro, I, there are so many times where I asked them, um, because some of them had shorties or whatever, and be like, oh, y'all just going to grow old together and be like, nah, I'm going to be dead by like 40. That is the craziest shit to say, but that's how some of them really think. Like, they're so short-sighted with their life. It's like, all they see is a quick bag, a quick check, a quick lick, you know? Like, everything is, like, so fast and quick, and, like, there's no patience in their life, you know? And that's what gets them in so much trouble and makes them people that you don't want to be around is because you need patience to really achieve something worth having. You're not going to achieve something that's worth having quickly. Nobody fucking, you know picked up acting and fucking just like blew up overnight after their fucking first day you ever see those fucking um musicians and shit that blow up real fast with the one hit wonder song or whatever and then they're off they they fucking fell off like that just as fucking quick as you go out you can go down so the point is people that aren't you know good for you are the ones and i know there are so many different types of people that are bad for you It's just that this is one that might like relate to other men, you know, black dudes and stuff specifically because, you know, there's almost this sense of pressure that you got to like that we have to be a certain way. You feel me? Like we all know, like, you know, black girls or, or Spanish girls or even like kind of the hood white bitches. They like ghetto dudes. They like hood dudes. They like dudes that smoke, that drink, that shoot people, that fucking like rob people. They really do. And that's part of the reason why I portrayed that in like high school and shit was because I knew I could attract girls if I did that. And the the amount of testimonials that I got for it too, like the amount where it's like I would be one thing when you initially meet them and then you kind of like switch up and reveal, oh no, I kind of listen to like pop music and shit too. Then it's like, huh? They would look at you so funny. And then like a couple weeks later, after they find out you're not really, you know, into the whole shit, like you, it's a persona just to, you know, get some or whatever, then they're gone. But that's the point is like, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyways, the point is that you should be able to be authentically yourself and find your people and not be around the people that are, I don't want to say pressuring you, but molding you into something that you don't want to be You don't have to be something that isn't like helpful to you. Like when has being a gangbanger ever been helpful other than getting bitches, bro? They don't really get money. Like their money is so short. It's not long like that. It's not, you ask, like you could ask fucking any nigga that just like sells butt or whatever. I guarantee you, they'll be like, I got motion. Their motion is like fucking, what? 20 bands and savings and cash, that's it. They got like an Infinity or a BMW. That's it. All I'm saying is what they have is just so short-sighted that it's not even worth it at that point, in my opinion, in my personal opinion. Anyways, back to, you know, being around people that, you know, are, are, are conducive of a, a good life for you or is helpful to having a good life for yourself. Again, with family members. Certain family members might not be your bop. Certain family members might not actually be family, you know? Like, they're your blood or whatever. Sometimes, nigga, I don't know you. Fuck. I know a lot of my family members, especially on my dad's side, bunch of niggas drinking and driving, smoking. You know, they're real fucking stupid. I'm not even going to lie to you. Slimy business moves. My dad always told me that, you know, my grandfather just does such slimy business. Like, he just, he he don't operate it right. And, you know, he produces kids that are somewhat like that. Some of them, you know, some of them are cool too. But it's like, you know, I got aunts and uncles that are just like, you know, fucking kind of bummy. Um, I got fucking cousins that are fucking retards and shit like that. So it's like, if I were close to my family members, I'm not close to any of them actually. But, you know, if I was close to them, if I was close to a cousin or whatever that was doing that shit, guess what? I'll still see you at Thanksgiving. You ain't gotta come to my house every couple weeks. Nah, you ain't, we ain't gotta hang out outside of just Thanksgiving, you know, chopping it up, talking about, you know, fucking sports and shit like that. You know, same same thing with even closer people. Like it could kind of be like that for your parents or for your grandparents. I know for me, my grandparents, I'm grateful that they gave me a place to stay, but like they could just be real negative. 
you know, they're old. They're in the old world. They're in the whole, you know, go to school, go to college, suck dick, all that kind of stuff. I'm not sucking dick. I'm not sucking another man's dick and making another man rich. That is gay as fuck. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. Working a job is basically bending over, getting it in the butt and in the mouth, and making another man rich while you do it. And then they throw you a couple dollars. When you really think about it, somebody that's like working eight hours and making like, what, 16 an hour, they make fucking like, what, 100, maybe $115 a day? You telling me I just broke my fucking body for $116? That's fucking insane. That shit is in fucking sane. No, no. And like, look, my eyes didn't open up to this until I started running my business and started making money with my business, right? So if you don't know already, run a video production company, photographer, all that kind of stuff, right? Depending on what it is, I can charge a thousand for like fucking one like little project. I could charge 500 for one little project. It could literally, it could literally take me one day to do. I could charge a thousand for it, you know? So like once your eyes are open to, to that kind of shit, you also are reminded that people are doing it at a such larger scale than you're doing it. I'm a small, I'm a small fry, bro. I'm still building my business. I've only been in it for a year. And like, you know, I was having this conversation with my girls, like, I want more. Like, I'm disappointed that I don't have more. In a span of a year, I picked up a camera and got good, gotten like real fucking good at it, built up a clientele, and now we're like rocking and making money and able to provide for myself, you feel me? So that's pretty cool. But that aside, being around people that, you know, promote fucking being a sheep and, and, and bending over for another man, that's not helpful either. They might love you so much inside. My fault. They might love you so much inside. They might really care for your well-being and care that you succeed in life. But remind yourself that it's your life, right? It's your life. You get to do what you want in your life. You only get one. You know, these people help you from the time that you're born till 18, maybe 21. But outside of that, you got another fucking 60 years to live, bro. You got another 60 years to live. Make the decisions for yourself early on so that you have those decisions to back you throughout the rest of your fucking days. Because if you're making, if you're letting other people make your decisions until you're fucking 30, that's an extra 10 years that you could have been fucking doing your own shit, figuring your own shit out, trying shit. You know how many old people went high school, army, kids, high school, job, kids, that's it, that's all they know. They're, the entirety of their life is sucking somebody else's dick and having kids. That's it. Now, of course, kids, phenomenal. I think it's the most beautiful thing ever. But your outcome or your decisions shouldn't be based off of th that outcome almost. It's early in the morning, so I'm still got alarms and shit going on. Yeah, your decision shouldn't be based on some fucking outcome like I wanna have kids at a certain age. I'm a guy, so I'm lucky. But it's like, how many people, like, like think about how many people that you've heard where it's like, they wanna get a job and like, you know, start a career and shit like that, working for somebody else, like I said, sucking the dick and shit like that, so that they could provide for their family and their family being like, you know, I wanna have a kid by 24 and shit like that. Why? 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 Why be in a rush? To do that because here, here's the thing here's another thing that you should know and I'm going on a tangent away from the initial video but it's like here's something that you should know and you should keep in mind is that things can wait you can wait to get a house you can wait to have kids you can wait to get a wife why the fuck are you stressing about getting a career or, or, or a fucking J-O-B and sucking dick at fucking 20 or 21 22 or whatever Give yourself a little bit of a buffer before you start like succumbing yourself to just like death and despair, gang. And like as a dude, especially, you you got a lot of time. You got a lot more time than a female does, bro. Like, 
you can be 30 and have a kid. You could be 35, you could be 40 and have your first kid and still be cool. You know, like it, it'll still be cool as long as you take care of yourself. Like the kid probably won't come out retarded and you'll probably be young enough to where you can go outside and go to their fucking recitals unless you like, you know, eat like shit and, and, and end up being all wrinkly and old real early. But like for myself, my dad is 50 and he fucking, I'm not gonna say he looks like he's 30 or whatever, but that nigga can still run. That nigga can still fight. Shit. It's back to the point is that, again, there are so many different types of people that aren't helpful to your growth and development. They pseudo are. It's like, oh, I just want what's best for you. Oh, I want you to go to college because I want what's best for you. Oh, I'm just trying to protect you. Oh, I'm just trying to do this. I'm just trying to, fuck you. Fuck you. It's not, you're not, that's not how that, it's not how that goes. You feel me? The people that really care about you will support the decisions that you want to make unless they're fucking retarded, you know? And some decisions are retarded. But even if they are retarded, most people that really care about you will say, try it. Come back to me with the results in like a couple months or a couple weeks or whatever. Most people will be like, just try it, you know? Because trying never hurt nobody. Trying never hurt nobody. Trying especially didn't hurt them. What the fuck does your life decision have to do with them? Keep that in mind. The topic was why, why most of your friends are holding you back. I started talking about family too. Anyways, yeah, like, I know you, know, I, I, I think most of us already know who's holding us back and, you know, how they're holding us back. Most of us are just afraid to admit it because we know that there has to be a result associated with it. You either have to cut them off or you maintain staying around them, but then you start to blame yourself because you start to sit in your thoughts and think, damn, this person is no good for me, but I'm around them just cause. It's kind of like not being able to break up with your girlfriend. It's like, damn, I don't really like this bitch, but if I say that to her, it's gonna hurt her feelings and I'm gonna feel shitty cause she didn't do nothing wrong. And then if you do end it, then it's like, yeah, it's good for, for you and stuff like that, but it's like you hurt somebody. You feel me? So, anyways, most of you already know the answer to your problems. Just fucking lock in, gang.